Welcome to the Fun Astrology and Merriman Market Analyst Saturday Financial Podcast. I'm Thomas Miller. Thank you so much for joining us. This, of course, the weekly free newsletter published every weekend on MMACycles.com. We're listening to this on August 9th. It is for the week ahead, beginning August 12th. First of all, an article from FoxBusiness.com. Mortgage buyer Freddie Mac said Thursday that the average rate on a 30-year loan tumbled to 6.47%. That's the lowest rate in more than a year. While that is down from a peak of 7.79% in the fall, it remains sharply higher than the pandemic-era lows of just 3%. Now Ray's commentary on this week just passed in the markets. He says stock markets found a ground of support on Monday, August 5th, following their stunning sell-off since the highs of July 11th through the 18th, when Mars, Uranus, and Algol all conjoined in late Taurus, and secondary highs on July 31st. In typical Mercury retrograde fashion, many indices then reversed on August 5th. They rallied into Friday's Libra moon, a solar lunar reversal date, to gain back approximately 50% of their decline from the prior week's plunge. In Asia and the Pacific Rim, the most spectacular decline into August 5th was in Japan, where the Nikkei fell 26.5% from its all-time high of July 11th at 42,426 to a low of 31,156. By Friday, it was back up to 35,671. China and Hong Kong also got hit hard with new multi-month lows. The Shanghai Composite dropped to 28.45 on August 6th, its lowest mark in six months. Sell-offs were also noted in Australia and India, but they were not as dramatic as in Japan or China. In Europe, the Netherlands' AEX fell 11.4% and the German DAX 9.9% last Monday before recovering the rest of the week. London's FTSE and Zurich's SMI indices also bottomed early last week, though the decline was less severe than in the Netherlands and Germany. In the United States, all three major indices completed at least a temporary sell-off on Monday, August 5th. The more substantial was in the NASDAQ, which dropped over 17% from its all-time high on July 11th. The S&P declined 10.5%, while the Dow Jones only lost about 7%. In fact, only the NASDAQ and Nikkei have attained our 16 to 26 percent declines projected for a four-year cycle low thus far, suggesting there is yet another decline to be seen by November. The trickster, Mercury Retrograde, also registered sell-off and weekly lows in gold, crude, and Bitcoin and Ethereum. Bitcoin fell to a low of 49495 a loss of 33% from its all-time high on March 14th, and within our target range of 25 to 50% for the 24-month cycle low due this year. Like stocks, each bounced back with a rally into Friday. Whether it is a corrective rally or the start of a new impulse wave remains to be seen. However, cycles still hold out the possibility of another decline ahead, maybe quickly, maybe into November. Now, this week's short-term geocosmics, a quote that Ray found on X from Winston Churchill. It was published on August 9th. You will never reach your destination if you stop and throw stones at every dog that barks. End quote. Now, Ray's thoughts on the future... Was that the four-year cycle low in stocks last Monday, August 5th, as Mercury turned retrograde? Anything is possible, and the trickster, Mercury retrograde, has a modest correlation with primary cycles, parentheses slightly less than 60% frequency when given an eight-day orb. It could have also coincided with the double top on July 31st, three trading days before August 5th. Two, the primary cycle crest that occurred July 11th through 18th in the U.S. markets. But in most cases, we see markets flip back and forth every one to four trading days during the trickster's reign. Furthermore, geocosmic reversal signatures are approaching that have even stronger correlations to primary and greater cycles than Mercury retrograde. In fact, the longest planetary cycle of the year will have its first of three passages on August 19th. This is when Jupiter will enter its first square to Saturn. 
This aspect also has a 60% correlation to primary cycles, but more importantly, these primary cycles are also 50-week or greater cycles within 10 trading days. It is very possible that the double-top highs of mid-July and July 31st were the crests of the four-year cycle. If so, there is another swing down below the low of August 5th looming ahead, and a break of that low may create more panic than what was just witnessed. Two upcoming periods stand out shortly that are powerful geocosmic signatures of reversals, even stronger than Mercury retrograde. The first is August 14th to 19th, which, in addition to the first passage of Jupiter square Saturn, also finds Mars with Jupiter square Saturn, Venus square Jupiter, and Venus is also in opposition to Saturn, and then the Sun square Uranus. The Mars Saturn square and Sun Uranus square each have historical frequencies of 80 and 82 percent respectively to reversals in primary cycles within an orb of 10 trading days, often within only three days. The primary cycle is more likely to be a trough, although it is possible it could be an early crest in a new primary cycle that would then be down for the next 10 to 20 weeks. The second geocosmic hotspot arrives during the Labor Day holiday weekend of August 30th through September 4th when Uranus turns retrograde, and shortly after Mercury turns direct, when two planets, as skittish as Mercury and Uranus, change directions in close proximity to one another, chaos and many panics can ensue. Additionally, the historical frequency of primary cycles unfolding during a Uranus retrograde period is 77%. The takeaway from the cosmos is that a four-year stock market cycle low could happen by early September, especially if Monday, August 5th lows are taken out before new two-week or greater highs form first. And now some longer-term thoughts on the U.S. election. If you just prefer the financial information, this would be the jumping-off place. If you want to hear Ray's thoughts on the latest in the election news, listen on. First of all, a quote from the Wall Street Journal editorial board this past week. This is still Mr. Trump's election to lose, but, as we learned in 2020, he is more than capable of doing that. End quote. Ray says, Yesterday, I received the following email from one of my most avid readers of the annual forecast books for the past, well, many years. Quote, Ray, do you remember you wrote this in the 2023 forecast book? saying, furthermore, don't be surprised, yes, I know it's Uranus we are talking about, if a female is elected to a very high office in 2024, as Uranus trines the moon in this, the July 2nd, United States chart. In other words, in the spirit of Uranus, the glass ceiling can be broken. If one of the parties nominates a female presidential candidate, the odds favor that party in 2024. With Uranus part of a grand trine, it can truly be a new world for the United States, a revival of its standing in the world, and a renaissance in science, technology, communications, and banking. End quote. Now, Ray says, before I get a dumpster load of nasty emails alleging I have a liberal progressive bias, let me state that this forecast had and has nothing to do with political bias and everything to do with ascertaining the correct chart of the United States. In fact, this was written in October of 2022 and was published in December of that same year. It was based on the chart of the approximate time that the vote for independence was completed on July 2nd, 1776, sometime just before noon in Philadelphia. The news of the vote was not delivered to General George Washington until July 4th, 1776, which then started the Revolutionary War. The source for that is David McCullough's book entitled 1776. One of the major differences between these two charts is the position of the moon. In the July 4th chart, the nation's founding moon is in Aquarius, somewhere between 17 and 27 degrees. 
The July 2nd chart shows 25 degrees Capricorn conjoining Pluto at 27 degrees Capricorn. On Election Day, November 5th, 2024, Uranus will be positioned at 25 degrees Taurus, forming an exact trine, which is favorable for popularity and for sudden favorable changes in life. Uranus also rules technology and science. In Taurus, it pertains to banking, and as it nears Gemini, it relates to communications. Also, the moon in a nation's chart is associated with issues involving women in the nation, their movements, and their status. Another factor of interest is that the progressed moon in the chart of Kamala Harris at the time of the election will be in 14 degrees Cancer, within the orb, but separating from the United States natal sun in 11 to 13 degrees Cancer, depending on which U.S. birth date, is accurate. This means that her height of popularity and enthusiasm may be one to three months before the election. Will it still be close enough to carry her to victory on Election Day when transiting Jupiter will be firmly conjunct Donald Trump's natal sun and Uranus and trine his natal Jupiter, emphasizing luck and popularity? In Harris's chart, transiting Jupiter will still be in her natal 12th house and close to the ascendant which suggests close to victory. It is four degrees away. So is that orb close enough? When it was Donald Trump versus Joe Biden, the outcome looked fairly certain in favor of Trump via geocosmic patterns. Now it's not so certain for Trump against Harris. Both have strong geocosmic arguments supporting victory. As a result, and on a personal note, I hope they agree to at least two debates, plus a vice presidential debate, so that the American public can witness how each responds to challenging questions and how they respond to one another in person. I think both candidates need this to convince those still on the margins, which are many of the independents now, who can tilt the election one way or the other. Well, more fun and surprises in the sky both this week and early next week, and we'll be keeping touch on all of it on the Fun Astrology Podcast every day as this unfolds. Thank you so much for listening. Have a wonderful rest of the weekend, and I'll see you back right here, same channel, on Monday. 